Hello everybody, I'm Teach Tiger and welcome to a slightly different video today where we will be unboxing the new USA Dock Tank locomotive produced by Model Rail. Okay, so before we start, I need to explain that this is actually the second attempt at this video. The model did arrive yesterday in the post, first class, just after I got back from a holiday. And when this arrived, I was absolutely desperate to get it out of the box, get it run in, and, uh, and make a video on it on the same time, I guess. And I uploaded the video yesterday, but the more I watched it back, the less happy I became with it, really. I was somewhat uh, excited, and uh, this sort of affected the quality of the video, I, I suppose. I was either not getting my words out properly, or I was repeating myself an awful lot. And the more I watched it back, the more silly it looked, really. So I decided to take it down and start again and produce something that I was a little bit more happy with. So before we start, I'd just like to say a quick thank you to A.D. Pullen, Grant Williams, David Howarth, Michael Henfrey and Peter Shaw, who all took the time to watch the first version of this video and show their support by leaving some very kind comments. So uh, thanks very much, everybody. I hope you all find this video a little bit more enjoyable, maybe. Right then, so that's enough of me going on, and it's enough of staring at a cardboard box, so let's get it open and see what we've got inside. Okay, here is the model rail USA 060 dock tank, produced by Backman. This is number 30064 as preserved on the Bluebell Railway. The code on the side is MR104 and this is the USA class 060T in BR line green Lake Crest. This has been produced by Model Rail and uh, there were 500 of these and these sold out a really really long time ago just to pre-orders. Um, I Cracky. I can't even remember how long ago it was that I placed my pre-order for this. Uh, it was so long ago, in fact, that I've had to change my bank details twice uh, with them. It's been a really, really, really long time. Uh, I know that this particular model sold out to pre-orders oh, at least two years ago at the very most. Uh, sorry, at the very least. So uh, it's been quite a while. So uh, I've been really, really, really looking forward to this coming through the door, finally. And, uh, and it's here. I'm really very excited. This is one of my most uh, favourite locomotives of all time. So uh, I'm going to get out of the box and, uh, and we'll have a look. So uh, I'm not going to worry about faffing around with the, the boxes or the paperwork inside. I'm just going to get it out and have a look because I've waited years for this. So <laughs> here we go then. So here it is out of the box. I have to say I'm really pleased and really, really impressed with this model. It is quite comfortably the highest detailed locomotive I've ever come across, certainly that I've owned. The amount of separately fitted detail is just quite staggering. There's too much really to talk about, so we'll have a look at the finer detail a bit closer up later on. But I thought before that we'd have a quick look around the loco in its entirety. 30064 comes in BR Malachite Green with yellow lining and a BR Late Crest and really does look quite striking, it really is quite a fabulous livery. This was a limited run of 500 and there are several other liveries available even though this one is currently sold out and they are currently priced at just a shade under £125. I was somewhat lucky, I placed my pre-order so long ago that it was before the price rise and I'm also a Model Rail subscriber so I got this at £94 roundabout. So before we have a look at the closer detail let's have a look at the history of the class in general. The S100 class 060 side tank locomotive was designed by Colonel Howard G. Hill in 1941. The United States Army Transportation Corps ordered 382 S100 class locos for use during the Second World War. These were shipped to England in 1943 and stored awaiting the invasion of Europe in 1944. After D-Day most went overseas but some had seen very little use and remained in storage at Newbury Racecourse. After the war, the Southern Railway needed to replace the B4 and E1 class tanks used at Southampton docks. These locomotives needed to have a short wheelbase to negotiate the tight curves found in the dockyards, but also be able to haul heavy freight trains as well as full-length passenger trains in the harbour area. The S100 was particularly well suited to this type of work, with a very short wheelbase of 10 feet or 9.04 metres, an attractive effort of £21,000 per foot. Oliver Bullitt, the chief mechanical engineer of the Southern Railway, recommended the purchase of 15 locos 
14 for traffic and 1 for spares for use on the Southern Railway. 13 of these were built at the Vulcan Ironworks in Pennsylvania, the remaining two built by HK Porter of Pittsburgh. Before the USA classes they became known under Southern ownership could enter service, they required considerable modifications, such as the fitting of steam heating, vacuum ejectors, sliding cab windows, additional lampines, British style regulators and new cylinder drain cocks, with further modifications becoming necessary once the locos had entered traffic, such as large rooftop ventilators, three rectangular cab front lookout windows, extended coal bunkers, separate steam and vacuum brake controls and wooden tip-up seats were all added. Radio telephones were later installed on the footplate to improve communication on the vast network of sidings at Southampton. For 15 years they were successful shunters in Southampton docks where they performed exceptionally well and the class was allocated the British Rail Power Classification of 3F following nationalisation in 1948. Unfortunately, due to their austerity construction, they deteriorated very quickly and their steel fireboxes rusted and fatigued rapidly due to the untreated local water, and by 1951 several had to have new fireboxes constructed from scratch. By 1962, they were replaced by British Rail Class 07 diesel-electric shunters, and the first members of the class were withdrawn. Some were retained by the National Coal Board, the Longmore Military Railway, and the Austin Motor Works. So now let's have a quick look at the history of USA Tank 30064, which is the subject of this model. Southern Rail No. 64 entered service in July 1947 at Southampton Docks and in 1957 was fitted with the radio telephones, turbo generators and aerials to improve the efficiency of operations around the dock area. In February 1964, 30064 became the Eastleigh Works shunter and was outshopped in Malachite Green livery. 30064 took part in several rail tours between 1964 and 1966, one with her sister engine 30073. In August 1966, 30064 was transferred to the western region and was allocated to Meldon Quarry. It was here that 30064 gained the distinction of being the western region's last active steam locomotive. On withdrawal at the end of Southern Rail Steam in 1967, 30064 was sold at Salisbury Shed to the Southern Loco Preservation Society, before coming to the Bluebell Railway in late 1971. Following a number of years in use, it was withdrawn in 1983 and is now awaiting major boiler work. 30064 is one of four British examples that have been preserved. Although 30064 is not operational awaiting its overhaul, there is one other operational example, 30065, seen on the Kenton East Sussex Railway, and two other examples are also waiting major overhauls, number 30072 at the Ribblesteam Railway and another at the Kenton East Sussex Railway, number 30070. So now let's go back and have another look at the model in closer detail. Straight away it becomes obvious that this is a very highly detailed model indeed. The amount of separately fitted detail is of a very, very high standard indeed and really adds a lot to the look of the locomotive. There's a large amount of separately fitted detail such as the handrails and there's even hidden detail down here which you can see behind the front buffer beam. There's also a wide variety of other separately fitted detail to go with the very well done moulded detail such as the rivets. The underframe detail is also very impressive with several separately fitted pipes and other various other bits of details seen on both sides of the locomotive just in front of and behind the rear cab steps. The outside wool shirts valve gear is also very very well represented and looks incredible with all the little fine bits and pieces including the expansion link and the reversing gear. The rear and cab of the locomotive have separately fitted handrails and a very small manufacturer's plate. There's also a variety of lamp irons and this model in particular features an extended bunker and the very finely detailed grills going over the rear windows. The cab is glazed throughout including the three front view windows and the safety valve and the whistle are also very nice separately fitted pieces of detail. The roof seems to show the most significant sections of moulded detail with the roof vents being entirely moulded but this does not detract from the look in the slightest. The malachite green paint has an excellent finish to it and the number and the crest are both applied exceptionally well. The very fine black and yellow lining really really does look fabulous. So now let's have a quick look at the Loco's performance. This model weighs in at 203 grams 
and on test with a newton meter produced a pulling force of just a shade under 0.4 newtons which is not insignificant in the slightest considering it takes 0.03 newtons to get a rake of four carriages moving the loco runs exceptionally well straight from the box and runs smoothly and quietly in both directions and has excellent slow speed running performance I know this isn't the be all and end all of locos but I was particularly impressed with its slow speed running ability over point work considering the shortness of its wheelbase which incidentally is shorter than a Hornby and Backman class 08 diesel shunter I was amazed at how well it ran without hesitation over the Hornby express points and that huge insel frog dead zone I'll uh, quickly show you what else uh, you get in the box very quickly. Uh, these are the detail pieces. Uh, there's some brake rod in, in there. There's uh, these two pieces are the vertical and horizontal drop plates that fit to the front just under the smoke box door. Uh, there's some vacuum brake pipes in there. There's some steam pipes in there. Uh, you know, it's quite a good, um, it's quite a good little selection really. Um, of parts so uh, there's those there is the usual Backman bits and pieces this is a little bit different because this is a, uh, a commission model so it also comes with this which is quite fancy this is the owner's information uh, and has you know the, the other bits and pieces but what I quite I quite like this is there's really detailed information here of where all the detail pieces go this explains to you what they are and this explains what sort of um, track you can get away with running if you fit all the, 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 the detail pieces. So for example, it's rated to no less than second radius curves. However, if you fit the vacuum pipes and the, the vac brackets and all these sorts of things, you're limited to third radius curves, which is really useful information. So there's the usual running in, the lubrication points, of that taking off the the body fitting a six pin dcc decoder all that sort of stuff so this is something a little bit different um which you, you you wouldn't normally get so i thought i'd show it off so yeah so there you have it and uh thanks so much for watching okay so i'm going to finish with a bit of a running session hope you enjoy it before it starts i'd just like to say a quick thank you to ad pullen who's given me the inspiration for the history section of this video so go and check out his videos if you haven't seen them before and also to sdjr7f88 who gave me the inspiration to try something a little bit different with the review of this model so thanks very much for watching hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll finish with a running session of the loco now thanks so much everybody bye bye